In this video, with the help of a Collab Notebook, I'll explain how you can introduce reasoning into Gemma 3 1 billion parameter LLM. So this is a notebook from Unsloth. I'm going to use it as such. And I'm going to explain what is this GRPO? How is it used over here to, you know, add reasoning capabilities to the Gemma 3 base model. Okay, 1 billion parameter uh, instruction tuned model over here actually. Okay. So what is done over here in this notebook is, uh, this is from Unsloth. Okay, Unsloth helps you to train models faster with less GPU VRAM requirements. Okay, so that is the Unsloth library. So what they've done over here is that first they initialize the packages, then they, uh, you know, initialize the Gemma 3 1 billion parameter instruction tuned model. Okay, that is what they do over here, right? They initialize the model. What they do next is that, uh, you know, they create LoRa adapters for this fine tuning. Okay, but we are going to fine tune with reinforcement learning using something called GRPO or group relative policy optimization. Okay, so now what they are going to do is that they are going to use this GSMK data set. Now, what is this particular data set? This data set is from OpenAI and this is a data set of grade school math 8K. It is a data set of 8.5K high quality linguistically diverse grade school math word problems. Okay, so you have problems like this and you have a solution over here. Right. So other thing is that these problems take between two and eight steps to solve. Solutions primarily involve performing a sequence of elementary calculations using basic arithmetic operations to reach the final answer. Okay. So we are going to use this particular data set over here. Okay. So the data set looks like this. There is a question uh, and there is an answer. Okay. So what they're saying is in the answer, there are some special hash symbols over here. So they will extract it and uh, they're going to extract only the answer over here. Right. Uh, especially after hash you have this answer so that is the answer they are showing over here okay so now uh, they are they are creating a system prompt okay uh, so here they are adding four extra symbols for working out or thinking reasoning sections and a final answer so this is the system prompt for the llm so here it says that you are given a problem think about the problem and provide your working out place it between reasoning start and reasoning end then provide your solution between solution start and solution end okay so this is the system prompt so here they are introducing these four extra symbols. So every question will now get converted. Basically, when the response is generated by the LLM, it should generate a response like this based on your question. Okay. So this is a system prompt for uh, for the LLM to generate responses. Okay. So this is how the uh, your input data set looks like. There is a question. And Natalia sold uh, this thing. Uh, there is the answer. There is the prompt. The prompt is you are given a problem. Think about the problem and provide your working out. Place it between start working out, end working out. Then provide your solution between solution start, solution end. Okay. And here is the content. Uh, okay, this is from the user, right? So based on this, the LLM should generate an answer. Okay. The next thing is uh, they are creating some uh, regex formats to match the reasoning section and answers. Okay. Uh, so here is that this thing to basically extract the answer over here. That is what they are showing over here. Now comes the key part of defining the reward functions to match the format exactly. Okay. So before going into this reward functions, let me explain a little bit about the uh, GRPO, uh, you know, uh, what you call group relative policy optimization for reinforcement learning basically, right? So this was a recipe which was shared by DeepSeek R1 when they created their DeepSeek R1 model. Uh, so they uh, mentioned that they use this group relative policy optimization. Now, what is this group relative policy optimization? So basically what is done over here is that uh, you, are, you have an LLM, right? So for that LLM, you uh, give a question like this, what is one plus one? Okay, it will generate a response, right? Where you have the chain of thought working out and you'll get an answer, right? Now you generate a group of responses. For the same question, you generate multiple responses from the LLM. Now each response is scored based on correctness or another metric created by some set reward function rather than an LLM reward model. Okay, so you, are, you have to create a reward function which says whether this answer is right for each of the response. Uh, you score it against this reward function and you compute the group average. Okay. You also, uh, uh, you know, you also do this comparison between each response score to the group average. Okay. The model is then reinforced to favor higher scoring responses. That is the high level idea of GRP. Right. So originally we had to collect large swaths of data to fill working out or chain of thought process. But GRPO or other reinforcement alg algorithms can steer the model to automatically exhibit reasoning capabilities and create the reasoning trace. Instead, we need good reward functions or verifiers. Okay, if you get the correct answer, give it a score of one. If some words are misspelled, then you give a minus 0.1 and so on. So we need to create this reward functions. 
okay so in this particular notebook from uh, hugging face where they are you know fine tuning small lm with group relative uh, policy optimization uh, it is quite well explained about you know how do you define the reward functions and so on okay this is another example of how again they've used the same gsmk data set and they are defining the reward functions there is this grpo trainer uh, over here in hugging face which explains about what is this you know how do you do this grpo it's an online algorithm meaning it improves iteratively by using the data generated by the training model itself during training okay so you have prompt you have these completions for each group you are going to compare a group level reward you are going to compare a response level okay uh, that is how you get something called as advantages right then you estimate the kl divergence between your reference policy and the original policy and you compute the loss other details are present over here okay at each training step you sample a batch of prompts and generate a set of g completions for each prompt then you compute an advantage which is what in simple language was explained over here right uh, the model uh, response is scored for metric each response is scored average score of the group is computed each response is compared to the group average that is what is this advantage part okay then there is a kl divergence estimation and then there is a loss estimation so using this basically you are actually uh, updating the weights of the llm that is the idea over here okay so here the reward functions are that we need to you know the answer exactly matches whatever is our ground truth answer okay for that we have a match format exactly function okay then you give a score of 3.0 right now if it fails exact match fails then we look at whether partial matches happened between the answer and our ground truth answer now based on the partial map you can give some kind of points over here okay some kind of reward points right if it is partially matching then it is 0.5 if it is less partially matching then we give minus 0.5 and so on okay depending upon the response this is the matching the format approximately right by counting each symbol so finally what we want to do is that we want to uh, extract the generated answer and reward it or penalize it we also reward it based on how close the answer is to the true one via ratios that is what is done over here you extract the response and for each response right you have a input question for that you get the completions now for each response basically each completion what you do is that you find whether you know it is an exact response if it is not an exact response if it is an exact response you gave a score of three if it is not an exact response then you check the ratio of you know the response versus original response how close it is and based on that you kind of you know penalize it okay that is what is done over here and you return the scores okay sometimes uh, the answer may not be a sentence but it could be an exact number so we also extract that that is what they have a check numbers functions okay for the extracted responses to check so this is one reward function check answer then you have check numbers which is another reward function okay now you can set up the grpo trainer and all configurations okay so here in the grpo trainer uh, certain uh, learning rate then the scheduler is cosine optim uh, optimizer is this and uh, you know number of generations basically for every question how many uh, responses should be generated uh, it is four over here so every group will have four responses okay and then they talk about uh, you know what is written over here is that we should increase the number of steps to at least about 200 to see anything happening that is what they are saying uh, 150 to 200 to see any action in terms of reward increase so i have made it as 175 okay and every 50 steps you are saving the model all right and now you can actually run the and the batch size is one over here okay this is a t4 gpu instance because on t, uh, they had suggested that over here and now you can run the trainer so i have, and what they are saying is that we want this reward to increase okay and after some point of time the reward will become stable uh, it means that the model is actually trained for reasoning right even before the model uh, rewards become stable you might see some kind of uh, reasoning okay that's what they say over here for example they say this you have this 5 4 microsoft model without reasoning okay which is bigger is this thing after some 100 steps using grpo it is actually showing some kind of reasoning over here okay and it says 9.9 is bigger than uh, 9.11 before it was not able to do it properly right it was doing it is now doing some reasoning but what they are saying is that you need to actually train close to more than 12 hours uh, with uh, grpo to uh, get some good results that is what somewhere they had mentioned over here in this particular uh, you know article when i read it uh, right yeah see this in order to get results you will need to train for at least 12 hours this is how grpo works but keep in mind this is not compulsory as you can stop it anytime okay and it is advised to at least uh, you know apply this model to 1.5 billion parameters to correctly generate thinking tokens as smaller models may not okay now let's go back over here so what i've done is i've started this thing and uh, you know uh, it is a long process if you look at it it is close to two hours but uh, you can see some of the responses which has been generated over here for some of the questions uh, for some of the questions it kind of you know there is no proper response coming out but then for some of them the exact answer is coming out properly 
right um, so it is able to do some kind of thinking it says start working out it starts working out and then provides a solution so you have introduced reasoning into this particular llm okay but uh, you know this reward what they say is that we need this rewards to go higher and what they say is that it will at least take around 100 steps or more for you to see uh, you know uh, some kind of reward column increasing right um, so you need to run it for more number of steps for it to become uh, you know versatile in terms of reasoning probably close to 12 hours is what they are suggesting over here right uh, so probably more epochs and more steps right and if you start plotting the graphs then you will see that the reward becomes kind of uh, stable after some time and uh, the value doesn't change it increases and then it kind of becomes stable then you have a model which has been trained that is where i kind of uh, in a particular notebook i had seen that i'm not sure if it is this particular notebook where they had actually plotted that right all the kind of rewards and other things uh, not in this particular notebook but in another notebook where they had done that okay so this is how you introduce reasoning once you have introduced reasoning into the model you can actually do an inference i'm not going to run that particular part over here but you can do an inference and you can check for yourself okay so this is a notebook from unsloth they have uh, their models also have they have done this grpo so you can check this for gemma 3 over here so the key thing in grpo is how do you prepare the data set and how do you create these reward functions okay uh, the reward functions are the key over here and if you look at uh, this particular what do you call uh, you know training of yeah, this thing here you are specifying the reward function so in this case uh, in this particular notebook they have created four reward functions for matching the format exactly appropriately for checking exact answer in, and for checking numbers okay so they have four methods over here reward functions basically so these reward function verifiers are the key for your group relative policy optimization to introduce thinking or reasoning to your base or instruction tuned llm models which previously don't have this reasoning or thinking I hope this video was useful to you. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. I'll be sharing all the links in this particular uh, video in the description of the video. See you in another video.